John Stott, pastor, evangelist, theologian and author, was born in 1921, the son of a heart specialist and agnostic. His childhood was spent in London's Harley Street, a name synonymous with medical consultancy in a city that would always be his home. Speaking in 1996, he recalls his early days without the light of the gospel. When I was a young man, before I became a Christian, if I'd met you then, I think I would have been able to tell you two things about myself. One is that if there was a God, I didn't know him. I was alienated. I tried to find him, but he was shrouded in mist and fog and cloud, and second, that I was defeated. But through an encounter with a Christian working in schools, the light of salvation would enter his mind. Actually, a clergyman in the Church of England who explained to me that Christ had died in order to turn my alienation into reconciliation, and that he'd risen again and was alive in order to turn my defeat into victory. John Stott entered Cambridge University, England in 1939 and attained a prestigious degree in modern languages before turning his full attention to theology at the same university. Possessing a formidable intellect, his faith in Christ was well-reasoned. How do we come to know that Jesus Christ is the truth? Well, my own answer, what has helped me most, is to see it as a combination of history on the one hand and experience on the other. If you like, the objectivity of history on the one hand and the subjectivity uh, of experience on the other. Building on a foundation of personal conviction about the power and reality of the gospel, John Stott went on to make a worldwide and long-lasting contribution to how the Christian church should understand and practice evangelism. Addressing a World Congress in Berlin in 1966, John Stott emphasized that evangelism should be communicated with personal conviction. Before the church can begin to engage in evangelism, it needs an experience and an assurance of forgiveness. The greatest single reason for the church's evangelistic disobedience is to be found in the church's doubts. We are not sure whether the gospel is true. And so because we doubt, we are dumb. Since coming to Christ, John Stott has lived out of a personal conviction that the scriptures are powerful and the gospel is true. The Bible is indispensable to true evangelism. Without the Bible, evangelists would have nothing to say nothing worth listening to, and no hope of success. The gospel is God's good news for the world. I certainly believe that in spite of what people say, there is within every human person a radical, fundamental quest for something. Maybe they don't call it God, all right, but they're looking for some reality which I would recognize to be the reality of God, even if they deny that that is the reality they're looking for. Evangelism should attempt to connect the questions of the world to the answers provided by scripture, a process John Stott has described as double listening. There is listening to the word on the one hand and listening to the world on the other because unless we listen to both of them, we can't relate the word to the world. Most Christians study the word, but not so many study the world and really understand it in order to relate the gospel to today in a way that is meaningful and that resonates with modern people. The importance of engagement with the world was boldly proclaimed by John Stott at the first Lausanne Congress in 1974. 
it comes more natural to us to shout the gospel at people from a distance than to involve ourselves deeply in their lives, to think ourselves into their problems and into their culture, and to feel with them in their pains. The importance of the practical dimension of faith was reiterated at Lausanne II in Manila in 1989. The proper response to the gospel is indeed faith and faith alone. That a true and living faith in Jesus includes within itself a measure of submission. And it leads inevitably into a life of obedience. John Stott's model for evangelism and the message is Christ. Jesus Christ was the first missionary and the church's mission is derived from Christ. The gospel that comes from God focuses on Christ. The scriptures bear witness to me, he said. With such an emphasis on evangelism, on Christ and the authority of scripture, it is little surprise that John Stott has had a lifetime friendship with Billy Graham. At the first Lausanne Congress on World Evangelization, Billy Graham asked John Stott to be the chief architect of the landmark Lausanne Covenant. I would like to see the Congress frame a biblical declaration on evangelism. The time has come again for the evangelical world to speak with a strong, clear voice as to the biblical definition of evangelism. People seem on the whole to have accepted it as a basis for uh, cooperative evangelism. The active ministry of John Stott is nearing completion, but his legacy will endure. Throughout a lifetime of ministry and service, his devotion to scripture has been unwavering, and his challenge to the church, similarly to be committed to it, has remained undiminished. And the church's message as originally given by Jesus has not changed. Man's greatest need, as we know it in our own hearts, is still the forgiveness of his sins and his reconciliation to God. We have this message. We must proclaim it with authority and without compromise. And I trust we can all echo the Apostle Paul's resounding affirmation. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes.